I watched it for a little while. I like to watch things on TV. Satellite of love. Satellite of love. As musicians and artists, we are all influenced by something. There's only one fact I've known about myself my entire life, and that is I really enjoy being outside. I get inspiration from a beautiful view of a mountain, or a big thunderstorm, or looking at a fish and noticing the spots and colors as I put it back in the water and watch it swim away. In this podcast, I wanted to explore the simple question, how does weather and the environment affect the music that we create and listen to? My love for the environment increased drastically when I moved to Duluth, Minnesota in 2010. Duluth is a harbor town located on the greatest of lakes in Lake Superior. The whole town has been influenced and shaped by the lake. The vast openness you feel when you stare across Lake Superior and can't see the other side is indescribable. Jack Klander and Emma Diener are both musicians from Duluth and dear friends, but their similarities stop there. I got the chance to sit down with both of them and ask them about their influences. Jack was my first friend when moving to Minnesota when I was 13 years old. I have been in so many shitty bands with Jack and shared so much time being vulnerable, listening to music and creating music in his parents' basement. The past few years, Jack has been a mainstay in the Duluth underground punk scene. Though punk isn't the most polished type of music, the raw emotion behind it can be more powerful than any perfectly performed piece. To give you an idea of Jack's creative nature, here's a short clip of his band called Brain Bugs. emotion behind Jack's music made it a no-brainer to sit down with an interview with him. I also sat down with a dear friend named Emma Diener. In a few words, Emma is a Duluth music queen. I met Emma in 2011 when we both worked as radio DJs at a small independent radio station called KUMD. In addition to working at the radio station, Emma has her feet in every single part of Duluth music scene. Not only did she work at the radio station, she also worked at the record store downtown called The Electric Fetus, and is currently working at the Glensheen Mansion as an associate events manager. Here's Emma talking a little bit about the work she does at the Glensheen Mansion. I kicked off my first day at Glensheen Mansion as the associate events manager with my focus on curating concerts on the pier and Glensheen Unplugged, two concert series that features Minnesota musicians. One is outdoors on the most beautiful outdoor venue I've ever seen on Lake Superior. It's an old boathouse pier, and it's the only one of its kind that's still standing on Lake Superior. And the stage is literally on the pier, and the dance floor is the water. I hope with this little clip you can get an idea of what the lake means to Duluth and the music that comes out of Duluth. In addition to all of her work, Emma also holds down the drums for an up-and-coming all-female quartet called Superior Siren. With a perfectly fitting name for the topic of this podcast, Superior Siren makes an eerie, beautiful form of music. Music that hits you a whole different area of emotions, as opposed to what Jack brings to the table. Here's a little sample of Superior Siren with a song called Swamp Creature. Bring me your keeper Where on this earth does your soul dwell? Can I open you up and take a smell? Strikes deep. 
Almost a complete 180 from the music that Jack makes. I thought Emma and Jack would be a perfect pair to interview to talk about how the Duluth environment and weather influences the music that they create and listen to. I'm hoping with all of this, we will have some kind of insight of how weather and environment will affect the music we create, or at least scratch the surface. So one of the first questions I asked both Jack and Emma is just to describe their start in the music world. Here's Jack's response. Uh, I don't know. My parents always had uh, the drum set and guitars and all that in the basement, so I've always been plucking around. But uh, but I don't know. Probably since I was twelve or thirteen, when uh, some friends came over, Dalton and uh, Kyle Johnson. Oh, Dalton and they Kyle came Johnson. Over and I would say that's that's pretty much the first people I ever played music with. When I think about Jack's house, I think of the basement that we used to play music in. I also think about his father's record room. His father is a huge music head, collects vinyl, and he actually gave me my first turntable. Emma's response was a little bit more brief. Well, my musical career started many, many years ago when I was growing up on the North Shore listening to music, and it's been with me ever since. So both Jack and Emma started making music and listening to music at an early age. I wanted to see how the lake influenced both Emma's music and Jack's music, too. Here's Jack talking about his time looking at Lake Superior and creating music. Oh yeah, the lake uh, has a definitely big response. Um, I pretty much write, I've written, written a lot of songs down at the lake. Uh, uh, just just being there and it's so vast and uh, always, always has a wonder to it. Never ceases to amaze. Um, Emma's response was pretty similar, but of course, it was in her own words. Absolutely. The sound that we create definitely brings forth the power of Lake Superior. And I believe that Lake Superior is why so many people gravitate to Duluth, Minnesota. There's something about the lake that is really profound. You go to it. You swim in it, you boat on it, you look at it, and somehow, some way, you kind of go to the lake, these questions you may have about life, and the longer you stare at it, <laughs> somehow it helps you come to those answers that you went to seek. And there's this power that's deeply embedded within the waters of Superior that definitely inspires and it lures people from all walks of life. So obviously, the lake means a lot to musicians in Duluth, and just people in Duluth generally. I also wanted to talk to Jack and Emma about how a cold Duluth winter, or cold winters in general, affect the music they make. Here's Jack talking about how winter affects him as a person and as a musician. Every, everything about winter is lazy for me. So you feel like you're listening to maybe different kind of music or just not creating as much or want to expand on that? Oh, yeah. Uh, just just about everything. You kind of just, uh, everything slows down in the winter. Um, whether my music case or what I'm doing or everything just slows down. I don't know. I asked Emma the same question, and here's her response in her own words. Absolutely. The sound of the seasons is something that I always, uh, always go back to. There are certain records in certain seasons that I will listen to. Like, for some reason, Neil Young. I always listen to Neil Young in the fall. And I don't know why that is. But it's because there's a certain sound that mirrors or it um, emanates within the sounds of that season in particular. Or in the winter months, I'll always listen to more somber, maybe uh, melodies, like some of our local favorites. 
like low and so not. So based on this, it seems like the seasons have a huge effect on both Jack and Emma's music tastes. And I feel the same way. Anyone that knows me knows I'm a happy person, but I'm a sucker for sad music, especially in the wintertime. I don't know why that is. I don't know if I identify with music in the winter, or it's some way for me to feel my feelings through a different form. Whatever it is, I'm glad we have music to cope with some of the stuff that's tough for all of us. Jack gave me a little piece of information that really, really fit with this podcast. He talked about some of his recordings and the areas he does it and how that affects the music he makes and creates. Uh, I, I actually rely a lot on just, I don't know, I've always like having my window open. I rely on like uh, sounds from outside, even re- recordings, like to include that. Yeah, like the natural sounds from outside, like a bird chirping or the wind blowing, something like that? Yeah, definitely. Emma also had some cool insights on how people from colder environments use the cold winters to help influence and create music. It helps. Yeah, like I was saying earlier, we're all water. So I feel as though we naturally mirror the elements that we live within and base whatever we create or who we are based on our surroundings and the culture that we live in. And so those that are from colder climate definitely have time to not hibernate, but incubate. (laughs) Nice. And during during those seasons and during that time, you got to have something to get you through the winter. (laughs) There is nothing like a winter in Duluth, Minnesota. So I think with all of this, we can definitely say that winter the environment we live in, and our location really has an effect on the music we listen to and create. But Duluth being a cold climate by a giant lake is a very interesting one. I think it'd be cool to look at different areas, different musicians, and see how their environment affects them. It's extremely difficult to pinpoint where creativity comes from, but I think we can say for sure that weather, environment, and the locations we live in has a huge effect on us. I want to thank Jack and Emma for sitting down with me, connecting, and talking about the creative processes. I want you guys to all think about how the environment affects you in either art, music, or whatever you do. Are we really all the things outside of us? It's hard to say, but it's fun to think about. Thanks for listening, guys. Have a good day. I like to watch things on TV. 